Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining this webinar. Um, I hope you, you do have a great Easter holiday break. Uh, my name is Xiao Dong Ma. Uh, I'm currently leading, I'm currently the acting group leader of the high temperature processing group at uh, GKMRC of ISMI at UQ. So today, I think it's a good opportunity for me to introduce the uh, high temperature processing group and also uh, introduce some of our focus on the uh, our latest activities on the decarbonization and hydrogen metallurgy of uh, ion making space. So basically, in this presentation, the first part, I will uh, briefly introduce uh, high temperature processing group. And second part that uh, uh, I will highlight uh, some of uh, our res uh, research projects that spans on the decarbonization of uh, ion making. So so first, uh, I just briefly introduce my uh, myself, uh, my my study and my research journey. That uh, I received I received my bachelor and master uh, from Dalian University of Technology in China, and then I um, and then I study my PhD in Japan, uh, the University of Tokyo, uh, for three years in the materials and metallurgical engineering. Then I traveled all the all, all the way south to uh Australia. I I took uh, the postdoc position uh working at UQ from 2012 and, and then followed uh by uh promote to research fellow and senior research fellow the acting group leader of the uh, uh the high temperature processing group at GKMRC. Uh, so that's my um, background and my, my research journey. So uh, first, uh, I would like to start to introduce uh, our people. Uh, that I think GKMRC has been well, well known for his uh, uh, the strength of, and the research uh, in mineral processing space, and uh, our our high temperature processing group that uh, we joined the uh, JCMRC uh, of the Sustainable Mineral Institute from uh, uh, June of two thousand twenty. So we are relatively new to uh, to to JCMRC to the to the people. That are by um, by our joining that uh, um, GKMRC has additional capability to do the pyro pyrometallurgy research uh, in the in the value chain of the mineral processing. So so uh, we are one of the uh, four groups that uh, sitting under the GKMRC. Uh, Professor Mosen uh, is a GKMRC director. Uh, he has his. Uh, he also has a uh, group called Advanced Process Prediction the Control Group, and uh, uh, Associate Professor Kim. He ha uh, she has a group called Separation Group, and Associate Professor Lisa has a, a flow flotation chemistry group, and uh, we are uh, we are the fourth group. Then. Uh, so so far, that we are, we have a, uh, we are, uh, we have a small group, uh, but we are growing our uh, group by by having more uh, research staff and and PhD students. And then, uh, uh, this is our research interest uh, that for people that don't. Uh, uh, I don't so familiar with the high temperature processing that uh, uh, we are dealing with uh, the materials or minerals at a very high temperature. Uh, normally, like uh, 
uh, at the six hundreds we roasting the minerals and and then about one thousand we uh we do the research like uh, uh steel refining uh iron making or nickel smelting from red right or solar grade silicon refining or or recycling of uh, uh secondary um uh, secondary uh, slabs of waste uh, and then copper smelting at a low temperature so we are trained by the the chemical metallurgy and the physical metallurgy so so we we did uh one or one project and some projects have been completed uh some projects are uh, are still ongoing and because uh, uh so recently we uh things uh, uh the climate change or, or energy transition that uh, hydrogen metallurgy and also critical metals extraction uh has become a hot uh, topic so we are focus we are focusing on these two uh, areas so uh from here i just uh, uh we identify three of our uh, research directions and uh, uh, the first direction is also uh our current core uh, research uh, area for the uh, decarbonization of iron making. Uh, this is one of our ongoing projects uh, that we work with uh, uh, both steel and also ARC linkage, where we try to uh, charge the uh, uh, pre-reduced iron ores that is reduced by hydrogen in sharp furnace uh, uh, outside of the uh, blast furnace. So, by this way that uh, we uh, what we try to do is try try to reduce the carbon uh, the coke coke consumption inside of the blast furnace so uh, we do this fundamental research and then we uh, we test and uh, how it's uh, the pre reduced uh, iron ore when when they are charged in the blast furnace how will how will they reaffect uh uh, in the mid in the middle part of the blast furnace, which is called cohesive zone, then we test uh, the metallurgical properties of this kind of uh, uh, pre-reduced iron ores. And in our lab, then we have uh, uh, a bunch of furnace that help us to uh, test the results. We have the electric tube furnace. Uh, we have the salting and melting furnace. And we have the uh, TG, TG, uh, TG, DTA, and DSC. Uh, our second uh, uh, research direction is to uh, measure the metallurgical stack property data. Uh, so those kind of uh, fundamental research data can help to uh, improve or optimize uh, the the smelting process, uh, we we are do we are measure the properties of slags. So, for example, we measure the liquidus uh, at the melting point of the slag. How to how to reduce uh, the the melting point of the slag and then reduce the energy consumption. Uh, we measure the viscosity or solubility of uh, uh, refractory or impurities. Like uh, also sulfide capacity, uh, electric conductivity. When we use uh, uh, electric uh, uh, furnace in the smelting process, and uh, this uh, the pictures on the left are our uh, facilities that we are using for our uh, experiment, and we also have. Uh, uh, some dynamic software to help us calculate uh, as the chemistry and properties. And our third research direction is uh, uh, try to help to make a, a better and stronger uh, steels uh, 
so the project said so we uh we had collaborated with uh, uh steel makers and some example like spring steels and gear steel that we have done and we we try to uh, understand the stress mechanism characterize uh, the steel micro uh, microstructures and then link the, the property microstructure and the processing uh, together to uh, to develop uh, stronger steels. So here is uh, uh, from here that uh, uh, we recently that we focus our research focus on the decarbonization of iron making. Uh, probably that people, uh, so most people have, have accepted that uh, the climate change due to the uh, the the large emission of uh, uh, CO two gas. I think people as as my OG camera see then they talk about a lot uh, on the. Uh, decarbonization energy transition that uh, that will need a lot of uh, uh, critical uh, critical metals and uh, so uh, we we focus on uh, we focus on iron making space uh, because that is important uh, because as you see that uh, iron iron and steel making uh, Industry is really a major uh, CO two uh, emitter. It, it occupy six to to ten percent, that averaging like seventy percent of CO two emission uh, globally. So I think it's very important that uh, we work in this space uh, because uh, in the past that uh, that this uh, problem that. Uh, the iron and steel making industry that produce a lot of uh, CO2 emission. But nowadays it's also that uh, it can provide a solution how to decarbonize in the iron and steel making uh, industry. So uh, here I just uh, uh, show this uh, uh, decarbonization pathway in the iron making, uh, in the iron and steel making uh, industry, uh, the, the, the pathway and also uh, the scope for uh, decarbonization has been uh, identified. Uh, like uh, within 10 years, uh, we, we aim to reduce uh, uh, like 30% of CO2 emission and then within 20 minutes, uh, 20 years, that uh, 50, uh, percent uh, reduction and then by by uh 2050 or 2060 then we aim to achieve a net zero uh emission in the iron making uh, iron and steel making uh, uh industry so well, so basically the the philosophiness is uh, the dominant in the iron making process where he used the uh, coke, and the trend is try to uh, reduce the coke and uh, reduce the uh, iron 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 amount produced uh, from the blast furnace, and then uh, instead to replace the uh, blast furnace iron making by by using hydrogen uh, in this hydrogen shaft furnace. At the same time, try to use uh, uh, recycled scrap, uh, which is not consumed the original iron ore and produce iron. So by these two processes, uh, uh, this is pathway that we uh, try to reduce uh, the um, CO two emission. Okay, so um. As we can see in the near future, that uh, uh, blast furnace uh, or big blast furnace basic oxygen uh, furnace is uh, still will be the uh, dominant route for iron making because uh, uh, 
is cost effective and also uh, energy effective. And but in this process that uh, the blast furnace account for uh, eighty percent of uh, uh, CO two emission. So in the short short term, uh, for the country that uh, uh for countries that like in China that blast furnace is still uh is still young is not it's it's not uh enter into the retail time. So blast furnace is still the dominant route, and then. Uh, our research is still uh, doing around how to optimize uh, the blast furnace are making optimization to help to reduce the uh, CO2 emission. And some measures like uh, uh, inject hydrogen uh, into the blast furnace uh, to reduce iron instead of consume uh, coke and uh, Second way is uh, like uh, inject the oxygen into the blast furnace to uh, to enhance the combustion and reduction in that taking place uh, uh, in the blast furnace. And then the third is uh, uh, currently we are doing called a uh, uh, advanced charging material that we use a pre-reduced iron ore, uh, reduced by hydrogen, and then charge into the blast furnace. Uh, and then the last is uh, try to recycle uh, uh, and, uh, and capture uh, CO2 uh, from the blast furnace. Uh, so here I just highlight uh, uh, some some of our projects and we have uh, we have done in the uh, just uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, you know for uh, for the decarbonization of uh, I am making, and uh, uh, this is an uh, example that uh, uh, we've tried to develop uh, the ultra low uh, silica and uh, uh, iron fer ferrous iron in the center. So, uh, so normal, uh, normal uh, in the normal center that uh, the silica is around. Uh, uh, around four, and then uh, iron iron oxide uh, wood star is around uh, six point five. So we uh, try to reduce the silica and iron uh, wood star in the center. So by this way, then uh, we can either uh, reduce the uh, the flux that is uh, generated from the centers, or it can also uh promotes the the reducibility so by by using by developing this ultra low silica and the wood tide uh center then uh we can significantly reduce uh, uh the coke that is uh blending uh into uh, with iron ores in the uh center process and then we uh we did the soaking and the melting test uh, for this type of uh, sinkers. and then it can indicate it will shorten the cohesive zone in the blast furnace, uh, which is good for the uh, blast furnace operation. And uh, so this one is also has a low uh, uh, gun uh, impurities. So we have can generate less slacks. So uh, this is an example of thinner development. And uh, here is another example that uh, uh, we try to lower the magnesium oxide, magnesium oxide in the blast burning slack. And so with this project that uh, when we think about this, uh, because uh, when we lower the magnesium oxide in the blast furnace, it means that we can reduce the the flux that he, that is added in the um, uh, center process, and uh, with less flux addition, that we can have a, a lower lower uh, stack volume uh, in the blast furnace. However, when we change the 
uh, magnesium oxide concentration in the blast furnace that we will change the property of chemistry of the slabs. So it can influence uh, uh, the operation of the blast furnace. So that's why we uh, we measure the the liquid we measure the liquiders of the uh, low MGO blast furnace slab. Uh, we measure the viscosity and the sulfurization, the sulfurization. So and then we just uh, evaluate uh, those three key factors comprehensively, and then uh, to provide the indication or the guidance that uh, uh, how much threshold that uh, uh, we can lower, uh, we can lower the uh, MGO in the blast furnace, and uh, well, so just uh, below the threshold of MGO concentration in the blast furnace that. Uh, uh, we we are not influenced the uh, uh, operation of the blood furnace, and uh, the third is because uh, we are based in Australia. Then Australia is the largest iron ore and uh, exporter uh, to the world for the iron making, and but in in Australian iron ore that uh, compare with uh, other iron ores, uh, like in Brazil, iron ores, it has uh, higher impurities like alumina or, or phosphorus. And then with, uh, with this high alumina iron ore charging into the blast furnace for iron making, then uh, we we did a lot. Uh, we also measured the, uh, the properties of blast furnace. One example is uh, uh, this, uh, if we use a high alumina iron ores in the blast furnace, then we should uh, use a, a lower, a low basis blast furnace and uh, blast furnace slag. And then we measure the phase equilibrium to uh, know the, the liquidus of the stacks. And uh, also, um, also, meanwhile, that uh, uh, we uh, we also uh, there's some interest from the uh, steel maker that they want to know the uh, try to uh, prolong the, the champion of the blast furnace so to uh, to help to reduce the the lining the lining times of the blast furnace. So when the blast furnace has uh, the hearth accretion. That is the the charge the uh, boron containing uh, charge into the blast furnace to have to uh, wash off wash off the Hertz accretion accretion uh, in the blast furnace, and then uh, and then uh, on the other hand, that uh, if they want to protect the lining of the blast furnace, they adding the titanium oxide. Uh, uh, containing blast furnace uh, burden into the blast furnace to to form the titanium nitride oxide uh, to protect uh, uh, the lining of the blast furnace. So uh, we also this uh, this is a project that we have to optimize and for the protection of linings in the blast uh, furnace. So here is uh, 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 another example that uh, we try to just uh, address uh, uh, the, the, the high high phosphorus uh, Australian iron ores for iron making um, because uh, Australian iron ore has relatively high phosphorus impurity, and then in the in the upper in the upstream of the benefit uh, benefiation. Uh, mineral processing is uh, really difficult to get rid of the the phosphorus from the iron ores, and then in the iron making process, the phosphorus will uh will go from uh iron making down to the uh steel making, and then it will concentrate uh it will uh 
it it will uh form form and remove into the uh seal making slags and those kind of seal making slags uh, are very difficult to be recycled because uh, phosphorus or uh in the slag so it cannot be it's very hard to reuse um because uh, phosphorus impurity so our research is we try to uh recover the phosphorus from steel making slag um and then try to separate uh concentrate and, and separate in the top layer uh for separation after we uh treated this slag at high temperature so um this is the example then we can uh we can separate uh, the phosphorus concentrate layer from the slag uh very you know very effective way um, and uh, uh so here is uh so our previous uh, uh project that is focusing on the uh blast furnace operation so here we uh we turn into some uh, hydrogen uh, reduction uh, iron ores. And here is an example that uh, uh, for uh, for charging the blast furnace. And uh, we do, we, we pre-reduce the iron ores, uh, not only the pellet that is open, that is uh, normally uh, used uh, in the reduction, uh, uh, in the uh, shaft, uh, reduction shaft furnace and we also do the lumps uh in this uh uh in this uh um, process uh so within this process then we try to identify uh how uh, which types of uh, iron lumps is can be suitable to be charged in the blast furnace uh, uh, after the lumps are reduced by hydrogen in the shaft furnace, uh, because normally the uh, lumps has an issue of degradation and easy, and it's easy to be uh, uh, it's easy to break uh, breakage uh, during the reduction. So we just try to identify which types of uh, uh, iron lumps is suitable. Uh, in this hydrogen reduction process, this is a uh, this is ongoing um, project that uh, we work with uh, Rio Tinto. And uh, here, this uh, shows uh, this is our uh, capability that we try to study the uh, reduction kinetics uh, of iron uh, iron pellets and use a. Uh, TD that is uh, equipped equipped in our uh, group. And uh, this is an example that uh, uh, we characterize uh, the reduced uh, uh, iron lumps by uh, MLA, which is house uh, at GKMRC. So, uh, so from the the light blue color to the red color, uh, the the iron 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 pellets are uh, gradually reduced, and uh, we just uh, uh, characterize by MA to idea to know the the proportion of uh, the iron reduced uh, uh, in the pellets, and. Uh, so basically, in our, in our group, that uh, our strength is an experimental part for for the experiment, and uh, but we uh, but we do need to uh, know some uh, and the reaction or process by simulation. So we collaborate uh, with uh, uh, Professor Jeff Wong. The group from School Chemi Eng, and with his group, then uh, they are doing the self DNDM uh, uh, shaft furnace modeling, and then uh, understanding the reactions or the thermal management uh, of you 
in the shaft of Prunis and uh, and when using the uh, hydrogen reduction. And they also use AI to help to assist and then promote the, the simulation uh, uh, to shorten the simulation time. And uh, lastly, uh, I want to uh, just show you here is uh, uh, our facilities and our uh, capabilities that uh, uh, we are uh, we are doing in the high temperature processing uh, space so we have uh, uh, we have we have many uh, high temperature furnace that is uh, that enable us to uh, uh, do the high temperature processing uh, uh, property uh, select property measurement, physical equilibrium, uh, extraction of uh, uh, different types of uh, ores like uh, uh, nickel laterite, or, or we also test uh, the uh, deep sea nodules uh, for extracting uh, cobalt, nickel, uh, those kind of critical metals. And we have uh, the vacuum induction furnace to melt and smelting metals, uh, refining metals. And uh, uh, we did like uh, the silicon refining, steel refining, or uh, aluminum vanadium alloys. And uh, we, we, we used to work a lot on the bottom blowing uh, copper smelting. And this is a, a water model that we used to study the fluid, fluid dynamics of copper bus smelter. And uh, we we have the TG TTA DSC to study the kinetics uh, of hydrogen reduction process. Uh, we have software, uh, FXE software, uh, to help us in the thermodynamic calculation. And we have the um, microscopy that is centralized at EQ. Then we can we have, we have the access to useful material characterization. Um, so probably uh, I will wrap this all, all my presentation and wrap up here. Thank you again for joining this uh, uh, webinar. Thank you.